Aloha and welcome to the Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. I'm Joe Kent, Executive Vice President of the Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. And today we're going to talk about an important topic of building delays. Um, building permit delays are a major headache in Hawaii and delays prevent homeowners from renovating and businesses from opening. Uh, but problems with building permits can do more than just delay a project. Shazad Ausman, a resident of the Big Island, knows this very well. A, a county policy change led to the mass cancellation of thousands of permits, and Mr. Ausman got stuck in the middle of this. So I'll let him tell the story, but uh, Shazad, I wanna welcome you to, this, to the program today. Thank you, Joe. Well, I want to let you tell your story. Uh, basically, let's start at the very beginning. Um, what happened and uh, and what was the genesis of you, I guess, purchasing this property and, and getting in the middle of this? Sure. So I purchased this property in 2021. So we were just in COVID. And at the time when I purchased it, it came with a set of permits to renovate the property. That is do a bathroom, do a kitchen, do some windows, doors a septic and a solar water heater. And um, at that time, I did all the due diligence on, diligences on the permits by calling the county, asking questions about the permits. And also we had an appraiser uh, look at the property. We had the home inspector look at the property where they all did not flag that there were a permitting issue. Okay, so the property was built in the late 80s in a remote part of the Big Island, a place called Miloli'i. It's known as the last fishing village. And there is a development just next to it called Miloli'i Beach Lots. And that's where the house is located. And the so come 20, end of 2021, beginning of 2022, when COVID was started to started to ease down, I started like putting my hands on the house and doing the remodeling. So we started right around February of that year. And uh, there was a, a little piece that had to be demoed and rebuilt, which was a deck and stairs. So I started with that, demoed it, rebuilt it according to the approved permits that had been issued in January of 2020, I believe. I, we completed that. It was probably six, seven weeks to do that. And then I called the county and I said, hey, guys, I'm ready to do a first inspection. And the county just like never showed up. They never came. They didn't come. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Then come June 2nd of 2022. I get a call from the building inspector and he says to me at that time, he says, hey, I will not be able to do an inspection of your house because your permit expired yesterday. And I said, no, I'm looking at the permit right now and it's five years from issuing. So it's 2025, it was issued 2020. He said, no, not that permit the original building permit from 1987 expired yesterday. And then I'm like, how can that permit expire like 30 years down the road? That doesn't make sense. And the county, when I had checked with the county, there were no issues with that permit. And then he said he couldn't find records of a final inspection, records of electrical and plumbing, therefore, uh, the permit was expired. So he said because he couldn't find the certain permits for electrical and plumbing, and then therefore it was expired, or, or um, the system expired it in a way. Yeah, so the EPIC system had come live the day before, June 1st. So technically, it seems like when the EPIC went live, it canceled that permit from the from the late 80s when you look at that permit there's no expiration dates those permits didn't come with an expiration date okay 
but also for the county to have been able to issue a remodeling permit, you, you're kind of like logically thinking that they did due diligence in 2019 on the status of the building and the permits that were issued prior to issue a remodeling permit because it was very extensive to get that permit issued. It included putting a septic in and all the departments signed off, zoning, planning, um, Department of Health on the permit. And so that's kind of like when my battle started is now I was, I was with a house that uh, basically where it's at, you can't get a permit. I want to get to that, but I, I wanted to go to that moment, though, when the permitting inspector said to you that your permits expired the day before. Um, was he at your house? Or was this over the phone? And what was your reaction? So that was over the phone. And I was just in total dismay. I mean, at that point, I am trying to like, uh, rebuke this. I'm like, this can't be expired. I mean, you must have made a mistake because the house has been there for some 30 years. And you must know that there's a house there. It's not possible that 30 years later, you're going to cancel my permit. That makes zero sense whatsoever. And, but he said, no, he can't do anything about it. And he's going to push it up. So he was just a building inspector. He pushed it up to the building chief. And the building chief, she did not do very much. She also was very, um, she just kept promising, okay, we'll find a way to resolve this. We'll find something, a resolution somehow. But she, it was just basically a delay tactic that began by then. So June, from June to October of that year, I kept asking them, hey, guys, give me a status here. Hey, guys, give me a status here. Like, I need to be doing work on this house. I can't just leave it like that because this is like a construction zone at that point. I heard nothing, zero. But weirdly enough, in August of that of that year, they issued me an, an electrical permit to power the house through Helco. So the house had Helco power, and at some point in time, it was disconnected. Uh, the reason, I don't know, but the people I bought it from did not live in the house. So maybe it was disconnected at that point through them, I don't know. But the county issued an electrical permit and Helco surveyed the property. And then um, the county was able to power the house and they conducted one inspection, electrical ex in inspection. And so when that happened, I said to myself, probably they, are, they figured it out, right? They found old permits. It was somewhere in an office, in a box, somewhere they got something. I see. So you were hopeful that this was I a was, sign. Yeah, I was hopeful this is a sign that we're going to be able to move forward. But came October, I got a letter from the building chief. And she said to me, all the permits are canceled. And at that point, I'm like, okay, well, what do I do? When you say all, all the permits were canceled, meaning even your permit to uh, remodel and like yeah. all of the all of your permits were canceled at that point. All of the permits, the mm -hmm. building permit from the 80s, the remodeling permit from 2020, the electrical permit from 2022, everything. And basically they said that they issued them in error. This was kind of like a... A, a a card that fits everything you know the moment something happens and they don't want to deal with it they're like we gave this an error and that's it this is not my problem now it's a you problem and it wasn't me problem because in the same letter she said that if i occupy the property and i live there it's against county code to live in an, in an unpermitted dwelling so she could find me so that was one Number two, she gave a, a she gave a way to maybe work around this. It was nice to give that, but it was just non-realistic. This is what they asked me to do. They asked me to pull brand new as-built permits. 
but that was just not possible because where the house is to build this to to get this new as built permit i would first have to do an sma because it's close to the ocean stands for uh, shoreline management area or special management area and it concerns the geographic location between the ocean and um, you know some miles inward towards the road. Uh, the regulations make it such that it's much more difficult to build there. There are a lot more restrictions uh, for getting things like building permits and so on. So your property was an SMA, meaning it made it that much more difficult to get a permit, okay? Correct, so at the time, this SMA certification was not required, but now it is. And anything built within 40 feet to the shoreline cannot get an SMA. And I am about 27 feet. So I cannot get an SMA because of that. So without the SMA, I cannot get as built permits. Then to bring this house built in the 1980s, to current code is basically like building a brand new house. The cost will probably outdo all of it. The cost to bring an old house to current code is just would be would be just extreme. And also you need to find the people that can do that. And in my case, since it since in such a remote part of Hawaii, it's not very easy. I mean, getting people to work and getting materials there was already difficult, but their workaround was basically just not a workaround. So I called her, uh, the building chief, and I told her and I asked her about this SMA. I said, hey, I am in the SMA. I can't get an SMA certificate. And weirdly enough, she said to me, well, you can still try. Maybe they'll just look away. And I was like, what? But you are not looking away. I have good permits, but you think the zoning department is going to do this? I just don't believe this. At that time, when I got that letter, this was a determination from the Department of Public Works. So if I had to do something, the clock started ticking now. Because once you get that determination, I believe it was 30 days to appeal it. If you don't appeal it, goodbye. You don't you you don't have any administrative um, power to basically say, hey, this is wrong. So I started that process. Within the 30 days, I filed an appeal with the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals is an administrative board. The members that sit on the board are appointed by the mayor of the county of Hawaii, they basically try to administratively resolve issues when county di county directors cannot resolve the issues. So we went there at the Board of Appeals, and uh, I was there the whole day. We were just unpacking the events one after the other. What was going on? What was... Oh, are you saying that you were there all day for your case or for other people's cases? Uh, I was there the whole day pretty much for my case. I see, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was, there was just so much to unpack because we have to go in the history of that property from the 1980s to now. And also we have to talk about the permit in the 80s, the permits from 2020. And um, the Board of Appeals is very limited. It what they can do. They can only reverse it if they believe that the director of the pub, of public works, if his decision was capricious. It's a very difficult standard to meet to to understand, you know, is this even was that a capricious decision? So I was not able to meet that standard according to them on that day. And they affirmed the director's position that all my permits were were expired or canceled. So at that moment, I was like, I mean, there's very little you can do. You are just like in full dismay. You're like, well, I was hoping this is like a good shot. 
I'm able to prove that, you know, the house is there. It's been there for 30 plus years. I'm remodeling it. I'm making it better. And I intend to be in that house, to live there. And suddenly I can't do this. Now, can I go back um, for a moment to your intentions with this house um, originally? You saw this house. Um, you wanted to live there. Um, wh what were you? Wh what were your intentions with this house, and basically your dream? And and also, um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. I know it's late in the conversation now, but uh, just for our viewers to learn a little bit more about you. Yes. So I was born on the island of Mauritius. The island of Mauritius is an island in Africa. It is close to like South Africa, but it looks just like Hawaii. It is that has the similar beaches. It also has a volcano there, though it's dormant. It's also green. Reminded me so much of Hawaii. Every time I'd go to Hawaii, I'd say to my family, Hawaii is like where we're from. Just that where we're from is 30 plus hours away by flight. And Hawaii, is, Hawaii was like five hours away. So I, I was started to think that, hey, like every time I go to Hawaii, I feel so much like I'm at home. This feels like my my original home where I was born. And therefore, when I saw that property in 2021, I said, I need to see this because this is this is like old Hawaii. This is not like built up everywhere. And it's on the ocean. And where I'm from, we used to go to the ocean all the time. And I went to see it and I was like, yes, this is it. Like, I want to live there. It re just reminded me so much of my childhood memories at that point. And it was an attempt to maybe recreate that or get as close as possible to that. And, and when I saw the property, I was like, needs a lot of work, but I can do it. The permit, I have five years. I mean, I can definitely make that happen in five years. And that's when I said, yeah, we we'll move forward to close my escrow and, and, you know, then I can get to work on getting the house back up and running. But that, that was just not the case. It was, it was like, I mean, we we're like two and a half years later, three years later, and I'm still not even at square one. This was going to be your dream house, though. Do you have a family that was going to live there with you, or uh, are you, were you living there alone? Or no, I, I was going to live there with my family, mm -hmm. and of course, they are very supporting of what's going on. They know the whole story, all the ups and downs that I've had, and they so they just push me to just never give up. Like mm -hmm. I can't give up. I'm too far into this, and I've been wronged so much. I mean, three years, I can't like, like uh, literally every time I'm there, I try to spend time there, but I'm always thinking, is this too much time I'm spending there? Because maybe the county is going to come and be like, Hey, you can't be there. This is an unpermitted house. You can't live in this. But also I'm scared that they're going to cut my power because now they're saying the power is also issued in error. Let's go um, back to the story then. So after the board of appeals. Um, yep. basically gave a rubber stamp to the to what view what you view as an erroneous decision. Then then what happened next? So when the Board of Appeals um, affirmed the director's position, I had 30 days to file an appeal now in court. So now we're going to circuit court. I definitely didn't want it to go that far because I was like hoping deep inside of me that somebody within the administration was going to fix this. I've knocked, I had knocked on pretty much every door, including the door of the mayor at that point. Say, please help. This is happening. Please help me here. Please help me. But the mayor basically said, he closed the door in my face. He said, uh, can you talk to one of my deputies? He will also close the door in my face. So nothing happened there. And then I said to the county, Hey, we have 30 days. Let's, find a resolution, nothing came. So come the 30 days, I had to hire an attorney to file at their circuit court. 
And that process was also very difficult. The Big Island is a big island. There are not a lot of attorneys there. there it, it's difficult to even find that. Then when you find an, an attorney, they have to do a conflict check. Since it's such a, a small place, everybody has a conflict with everybody because maybe they've worked with one of the clients, one of the interests that you're going to sue and they can't take you. Oh. So, so that adds another layer of complexity in trying to find representation. And it took me a while after knocking on so many doors and like pleading, please help me. I need an attorney for this. Then I found my attorney finally. And uh, his name is Patrick Wong. And he's with Carl Smith Ball LLP. It's a very um, an old and prestigious law firm. They own, I think, all the islands. And he ran it, the conflict check and it came out clean. So he could take my case. So I was happy, but at the, at the same time, not happy because I don't have a resolution. I don't have a remedy. All I was looking for is give me a remedy, give me something so I can like live in my house full time, like be there as much as I want without thinking, okay, maybe the county can do something against me, or maybe I have a bad neighbor that's going to come after me and they're going to be like, this is an unpermitted yeah. house and you can't live there because sometimes your neighbors, they come to you as friends, but they are thinking other way. They come to you as, you know, with that aloha spirit and you think this is nice, but in reality, they are just like sussing out what's going on. Did you ever, by the way, um, ha hear of any other people on the big island who also had the same similar type of story where they had something that they thought was permitted then on what is it june of 2020 or 2021 whenever that was the system uh deleted all of those permits and now um what i think there's tens of thousands of people in that boat H have you ever talked to anyone like that yes yeah, so when the Epic system went live, I saw a news article that said 40,000 permits had been canceled. And where I am within the development, there were a few other people in that similar boat where the Epic system came live and their permits were kind of like forced, expired or forced, canceled. But also when I did the Board of Appeals, we had some public testimony in the beginning and some people came and said, this is happening to me as well. Like, please help and do something because either we can't afford to pull new permits or we can't afford to bring the house to current code or, um, you know, something that ha would have just an undue burden on them. It's just too, it's a, it's a, getting permits in Hawaii is very burdensome. It's not easy. It takes a long time. And if you don't hire the right people, you might never get your permits. It just it's just a very burdensome uh, part mm. of of owning and building in Hawaii. So I'm stand right now then. So my case is we have a we have our oral arguments next year in February. As of now, the case has been in the courts for that long, and the county has not reached out for a settlement. Though they, cast, they have said, we will try to settle this out of court, they have not. And so where it stands is I'm still kind of like square one, mm. where I don't know where I am. I don't know what's happening. It's, there's a, the, the future is unknown. I don't know. And it's really stressful because I bought it. I put all this money in it. And now how to hire an attorney and then and then that's another cost. And I still don't know if I will I will succeed there. I still don't know if this is the path that can remedy what's happened, can remedy my wrong. I'm hoping for uh in this case a resolution just for yourself or for others, or maybe a systematic fix, or or um, what what is your biggest dream right now? Well, my biggest hope and my biggest dream is that the county 
acknowledges and says, yes, everybody to everybody that this happened, we made a big mistake and we're going to fix it for everyone, not just for me, because just like me, I am one of many that came forward and said, this is wrong, guys, you can't do this. There are others that just can't come forward. There are others that maybe don't even know that they have that problem right now. So I'm hoping that this will be an eye opener for the county. I'm hoping that the mayor, this is an, an eye opener for him, for him to see that, hey, this is a big problem. We implemented this system, but the system caused new issues. Maybe that was not intended, but it is what happened. And do you think that um, there has been built a culture of fear around the permitting process such that, you know, if uh, if there are 40,000 other people who are in the same boat, I'm sure a lot of them are watching your case very carefully and, and happy that you're uh, the tip of the spear here. But for a lot of people, um, going down the legal avenue is not, um, you know, it is a very daunting thing. So, um, so ha have you heard from anyone about um, their view of your case? To go back to the culture of fear. So I had spoken to some architects on the Big Island, kind of like at the beginning when my whole ordeal was started. And I was asking them, hey, can you testify at the Board of Appeals? And they were like, no, because we work with, the, we work with these people. And if we come and testify, they might not give us permits. And then our clients are going to be upset. So there was that for sure, where if you say something wrong or you go and you fight for something that's right, they might like create undue burden for you. That really was shocking to me that people would think that way because you think that your local government is here to help you, right? Not to fight you and have like a vendetta against you for what you're doing. But then... So other cases that I've heard or people that I talk to that are in that similar boat. So of course they are hoping that my case will resolve their issues, mm -hmm. that they'll be able to get their forced, canceled or expired permits back on, and then they can finish and final their projects. And, but so far, um, as you said, not everybody can do that. I am in a position where I am able to do this. But for most people on the big island, especially ones living in like remote areas, they, you know, they're just at the whim of the government. They can't, they just wait and they hope that it fixes itself, but it might not. Well, Shazad, um, thanks so much for sharing your story with, with us today. Is there anything else you'd like to share in the minute or so that we have left? Yes, I think that um, that local government is here to like help the constituents because we we vote for them to fight for our rights. We vote for them to be our defender. But here it seems like we vote for them, and then they either makes it more they make it more difficult for you, or they just do nothing. In the end, I think that that local government have such a special power and they should use that for the greater good of everybody, not uh, expanding their local government to create more burdens and hurdles for everybody like what's been going on here. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much again for sharing your story um, and best wishes to you and good luck uh, on your journey. Um, and thanks to all the viewers for watching the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Um, we're going to probably do a write-up of this and put it on our website at grassrootinstitute.org. Uh, if you'd like to follow our work, um, we'll keep in touch with what Shazad's doing. So go to grassrootinstitute.org, our newsletter, to uh, stay in touch. And uh, again, aloha, Shazad. Thanks so much for sharing your story. Aloha.